This is a story of two poor, Armenian boys, who belongs to a tribe, which is popular for its trust, and honesty. Let us begin. Aram is nine years old. His cousin is Morad. Those days, the world was full of magnificence, and life was a delightful and mysterious dream. Morad was considered crazy by everybody, except Aram. One day, Morad came to Aram's house at four in the morning and woke him up. Aram, Aram. Wake up. Yes. It is a horse. You're not dreaming. Wake up quickly, if you want to ride. Aram began to think, whether to believe it or not. I love horse riding. I have memories of a horse. But, we are very poor. We have no money. Our whole tribe is poverty stricken. I can't believe he has a horse. Our Garaglanian family is the most amazing and comical poverty in the world. No one knows how we get money enough to keep us alive. We are famous for our honesty. None of us can steal from others. Even I can see the horse. I can smell it. I can hear its breathing. But I can't believe. Because Murat cannot have bought a horse. And I cannot believe that he has stolen it. No member of Garaglanian family can be a thief. Where did you steal this horse? Come, if you want to ride. This means you've stolen it. Then, he thought. Stealing a horse is different from stealing something else, such as money. If one is crazy for horses, the way we both are, then it's not stealing. It cannot be called stealing if we are not selling this horse. Let me put on some clothes. All right, but in hurry. He wore some clothes and leapt on the horse behind Morat. In less than three minutes, they were on Olive Avenue, and then the horse began to trot, run. Morad began to roar. Morad was crazy. Every family has a crazy streak. Before him, his uncle, Korov, was a crazy, a man with black hair and the largest mustache in San Joaquin Valley, a valley of California. He is so furious, so irritable, so impatient, that he stopped anyone by roaring. It is no harm. Pay no attention to it. One day, Korov's son, Eric, fire in our house. But Dad has gone to get his mustache trimmed. He ran to the barber shop. Dad, there's a fire in our house. It's no harm. Pay no attention to it. Then the barber said, Your child is saying, your house is on fire. Enough. It's no harm, I say. Mord was considered a natural descendant of Korov. Although, Korov was his uncle. Mord's father was Zurab who is practical. This is how it is, in their tribe. Murad is considered a descendant of his uncle, but not his father. Here, a man can be the father of son's flesh, but it's not necessary that the man is a father of his son's spirit. So, where were we? Murad and Aram are riding the horse. They let the horse to run, as long as he could. At last. Get down. Now I want to ride alone. Will you let me ride alone? This is up to the horse. Get down. The horse will let me ride. Don't forget that I have a way with the horse. I have also. For the sake of your safety, get down. Okay, but you've to let me try too. When Aram got down, Muard kicked the horse and shouted, Vizier, run. The horse stood on two back legs and burst into a fury of speed. Murad raced the horse across fields, to an irrigation ditch, and five minutes later, returned. The sun was coming up. Now, Aram leaped on the horse. He didn't know to ride a horse. It was the most awful fear for Aram. The horse didn't move. Murad said to kick the horse. The horse began to run. Aram didn't know what to do. The horse didn't run in the irrigation ditches, but on the road, to the vineyard of Dickon Halabian. There he began to jump. Aram fell down. But the horse didn't stop. I'm not worried about you. We've got to get that horse. You go this way, and I'll go this way. If you find it, I'll be near. It took half an hour for Morad to find the horse. 
The world is awake now. What will we do? We can either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning. Aram knew he'd not return him, but hide him until tomorrow. Where will we hide him? I know a place. When did you steal this horse? I had been taking these early mornings for some time and had come to you today because I knew how much you longed to ride a horse. I asked, how long ago did you begin riding? This morning was my first ride. Are you telling the truth? No, of course. But if we are found out, you have to say that we both began only today. Think that you know only that we started this morning. All right. Quietly, Murad walked the horse to the barn of a deserted vineyard, which was once pride of a farmer, Fetvagian. There were some oats and dry alfalfa in the barn. Then, Aram and Murad went back to home. It wasn't easy to get the horse behave so nicely. First, it wanted to run wild, but, as I've told you, I have a way with the horse. I can make it do anything that I want. Horses understand me. How do you do it? I have an understanding with the horse. But, what sort of understanding? A simple, an honest one. I wish I knew how to reach such an understanding with a horse. You're still a small boy. When you will reach 13, you will know. In the afternoon, Uncle Korov came to Aram's house for coffee and cigarettes. He talked about the old country, which they had before. Then, a farmer named John Byro also arrived. He was an Assyrian, but had to learn Armenian because of loneliness. Aram's mother brought coffee and tobacco for the farmer. My white horse, which was stolen last month, is still gone. This means he is the owner of that horse. But he says the horse is stolen a month ago. Means Murad had been riding the horse for many days. My horse is still gone. I can't understand. It's no harm. What is the loss of our horse? Haven't we all lost our homeland? What is this crying over a horse? That might be all right for you, a city dweller, to say. But what about my Shuri? Suri is a horse-driven carriage. What is a Suri without a horse? Pay no attention to it. I walked ten miles to get here. And you have legs. My left leg pains me. Pay no attention to it. That horse cost me sixty dollars. I spit on money. The farmer went away. Aram ran to Murad's house. Murad was sitting under a peach tree, repairing hurt wing of a robin bird. The farmer, John Byro, visited our house. He wants his horse. You've had it for a month. I want you to promise not to return it until I learn to ride. It will take you a year to learn to ride. We could keep the horse for a year. What? Are you inviting a member of your Oglanian family to steal? The horse must go back to its true owner. When? In six months, at the maximum, Murad threw the bird into air. Every early morning, for two weeks, they both took the horse out of the barn of the deserted vineyard, where they hid the horse. When it was Aram's turn, the horse leaped over grapevines, and then threw him and ran away. Nevertheless, Aram hoped that he will learn to ride the way his cousin rode. One morning, when they both were on the way to Vetvagian's vineyard after riding the horse. John Byro, the owner of this horse, is coming. The farmer was on the way to town. Let me do the talking. I have a way with farmers. Good morning, John Byro. Good morning. What is the name of your horse? My heart. A lovely name, for a lovely horse. I could swear that this is my horse, which was stolen from me. May I look into his mouth? Of course. Byro examined the teeth of the horse. Tooth for tooth. I would swear, that it's my horse. If I didn't know your parents. The fame of your family, for honesty, is well known for me. I can't think, that you can steal my horse. Yet the horse, is the twin of my horse. A suspicious man would believe his eyes, instead of his heart. Good day, my young friends. Good day, John Byro. Then, Aram and Moore took the horse to John Byro's vineyard and put it in the barn. Some dogs followed them, without making a sound. 
I thought the dogs would bark. They would bark at somebody else. But I have a way with dogs. Murad put his arms around the horse, patted him, and then they went away. As they had returned the horse, to John Byro's vineyard undetected, John Byro came Aram's home. Hello, Aram's mother. I have come here, with my Surrey. My stolen horse is returned. Who stole your horse? I don't know, what to think. The horse is stronger than ever, and better tempered too. I thank God. Quiet man, quiet. Your horse has been returned. Pay no attention to it. 